Hello, in this video, I will take you through design VATs, landlord rent and maintenance tracking spreadsheets. Now this template is powered by Microsoft Excel, so you need to have Excel or version from 2013 installed on your computer. Now once you open up the template, you arrive at the dashboard, and this holds three thumbnails to navigate to the three major sections of the template. We have the property section where you log your properties, the rent section where you enter your rental income as at when received, and the report section which has multiple automatically generated reports. Now in this video I'm going to go through all the sections starting with the property section and before I do that first of all let me do a quick recap of the functionalities that you can benefit from getting this spreadsheet. So first of all this spreadsheet is designed for landlords and it enables you to track your rental income so that you can be able to know on a monthly basis on an annual basis the total income generated per property and across all of your properties. It also enables you to track your daily maintenance activities, so you can be able to log activities per property, generate a report to know the total amount you spent for repairs and maintenance for each property and across all properties. There's equally a section where you can log your pen pending maintenance and then your multiple automatically reports that you can generate from this template. So first I go to the property section to demonstrate how you add properties to the template. To do that, you simply click on the terminal properties and it takes you to that section of the template. Now all sections have an identical formatting. In the upper left hand corner we have the section title and this tells the user at any point in time the section you're currently on. So notice it says property information so you know this is where you log in all of your properties. To the right of this we have two buttons. To add a new property, to delete an existing property. Above this we have a navigation pane with additional buttons to navigate to other sections of the template. You simply click on a button, for instance dashboard, and it takes you to that section. Recall this is where we started, we then clicked on property. So each label here represents a button to navigate to a particular section of the template. And below the two buttons here we have our data table and this is where you list all the properties you have. So at the top you notice we have column headers. These are the attributes you expected to supply per property. Now you can notice that we have two fields here. These are formula generated fields. So at any point in time the template will automatically count the total number of properties you have and the total portion of the properties or total number of all of your properties that are occupied by tenants. Now to be able to better appreciate the summary here we need to first log in properties. So to add a new property you simply click on a new property button at the top and this pops up an Excel form. Now Excel form provide a simple way to store data to this table here. So you notice that the column headers that I referenced earlier are equally listed on the form as labels. The user simply has to supply values to the white portion of the form. So the first thing the user has to do is to indicate the property type. Now the templates has a section where you can be able to list all the type of properties you have, but by default we just listed four property types, but later on in the video you can go ahead and modify this and add property types as desired. So the user selects the property so you can type or you can select from the drop down list. Once you're done selecting the first attribute, you make use of the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next field where you indicate the purchase date. Now some fields are optional, so if you can't recall the purchase date, you can leave it blank. Purchase amount, you can leave it blank. The only mandatory fields are the property type, the rental amount as the monthly rent, the address, and then the identifier field. I'm going to go ahead and enter a generic date. So this is my purchase this on the 1st of February 2018, 20, 2008, excuse me. I purchased this for 300000 and the rental amount, so how much am I charging my tenants on a monthly basis, so let's assume that's 3500 and then the rental property. Once I'm done entering the property address, I move on to the identifier field. Now what the identifier field is, is that it enables you uniquely identify each property. So for instance, a triplex is made up of three properties. So each of the property has to be entered independently. So the first property can have an identifier of one. The second property in the triplex will have an identifier of two and then the third an identifier of three. So that that way each property has a unique name. So since this is the first, I'm going to go ahead and enter one and I'm going to leave the notes field blank. Once I'm done, I simply click enter and it's going to store that property to my database. So we should see the property listed on the first row. Now the template will automatically generate a property name. The property name is made up of the property type, triplex the address you specified, and then the unique identifier. So now you know this is the first flat or the first building in the triplex. To add another, you simply repeat the process, you enter the purchase date, the amount you purchased it for, the rental amounts, the property address, since it's the same property, we're going to select the same address, 
This is going to be the second building in this particular triplex. And then I repeat that a third time for the third building in that triplex. So the same way if you have a fourplex, you're going to repeat that four times. And if it's a single apartment, you have to enter it only once. So pretty much the identifier just enables you at any point in time when you're indicating lease information, you can be able to say, okay, this is the tenant that rented the first flat, the second, and the third, but they're all under the triplex. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that again a second time. The amounts I purchased it for, the rental amounts, the property address is the same, so I don't have to type, and this is going to be three. Now, if you accidentally enter one here, we've added functionalities to prevent you from entering duplicate IDs. So recall that we've already entered one and two, so this has to be the third in this particular triplex property. I'm going to go ahead and click on enter. So now I've successfully entered the three flats in the triplex that I own. The respective addresses, the IDs, the rental amounts, and if I scroll to the right, you find other fields listed. Now at the top, you notice the template has automatically increased my properties to three. So as you add additional properties, it will automatically increase the overall total at the top. Now, if you scroll to the right, you notice that we have some formula generated fields. So we designed the template in such a way that it will automatically tell you at any point in time the most recent occupant using the lease information section we're going to cover shortly. So it's going to tell you at any point in time this is the tenant that currently occupies this property. This is the date, the most recent start date for the lease, the lease status if it's active or inactive, and then the total number of pending maintenance for the property. But it's currently blank because we haven't added data. So later on, when you add lease information and pending maintenance information, it will automatically update this section. So that's a summary of how the property information section works. You simply click on the new property button, supply all the values, and then you click on enter. These are the only mandatory fields you need to supply. So notes is optional, amount is optional, and the purchase date is also optional. Now that we've covered the first section of the template, we move on to the second section where we log maintenance activities. And before I do that, I'm going to demonstrate how you delete properties. So recall to add, you click the first button. Now if you want to delete any property from this section, all you need to do is to click on the property name you want to delete. So if I want to delete the last property, I just click on it. You notice Excel puts the border around the cell, then I click delete. Once you do, you get a confirmation message asking you if you want to delete this property. If you do, you click on yes. If you don't, you click on no. So step one, you click on the property name. Step two, you click on delete. Step three, you click on yes. So that covers how you add properties and how you delete properties. So next, we move on to the maintenance section, which shows you how you can log maintenance activities for each of the respective properties. So we simply click on the maintenance button on the navigation pane, and it takes us to that section of the template. So we're currently in the maintenance information section. If we look in the upper left, you notice the title tells us exactly that, that this is where you document your daily maintenance activities. So whenever you spend money on any property, you need to log the information here. To the right of this, we have two buttons to add a new expense, to delete an existing expense. Above the two buttons, we have our navigation pane. And below the buttons, we have our data table where you're going to list your daily spending. Now, it works exactly the same as the property section. To add a new expense, you simply click on the first button, New Expense, pops up a form, you supply values to the white portion of the form, and then you click the Enter button. Now, before I cover this section, first of all, I'm going to cover the contractor section. So you notice there's a field here for you to log in or to indicate a contractor per expense spending. Now, the template has a contractor database where you can store your contractor information particularly if you use recurrence contractors, so you don't have to keep typing the name each time you're entering an activity. So to navigate to the contractor section, first you're going to click on the tenants button on the navigation pane, and then click on add contractors. Now this is your contractor database. It's just a section where you can log your contractor's name, phone number, details pertaining to the job they offer, email address, and contact address. This is an optional feature. If you don't use recurrence contractors, you can leave this field blank and just go ahead and log your activities. But per adventure, you do. To enter a contractor's name, you just double click, enter the name of the contractor. I'm just going to call this John Plumbin. You make use of the tab key, you enter the contractor's phone number, nature, so we just Plumbin Services, email address if you have it, and then the contact address if you just want to know the location. So we're just going to put that Atlanta, Georgia. So now I've successfully entered the first contractor. So recall what I did, I just double clicked on the first field, I entered the name of the contractor, the phone number, details pertaining to the job they offer, 
email address, which is optional, and then contact address. So this is just a database where you list all of your contractor information. So now we've added two contractors, which is the plumbing and the electricals. So next we go back to the maintenance section and we log our first maintenance activity. So we click the new expense button. We indicate the dates that we spent this amount of money. I'm going to change this to January. Next, we indicate a contractor. You notice the drop-down list now lists the two contractors that I just added. So this way, I don't have to keep typing each time I use that contractor. So let's go ahead and click on plumbing. Next, I indicate the property. Now, recall we have three properties. They're all in the same address, but it's three independent flats. So this way, I can be able to say this is the amount I spent in flats one, flat two, or flat three. So let's go ahead and select the first flat. Next, I indicate the expense type. Now, this just enables you to indicate if it's a repair activity or a maintenance activity in the event that on a monthly basis, you want to know the amount you spend in each category. So let's assume that this is a repair. Next, you indicate details pertaining to the repair. So this can be clearing drainage pipes. Let's just assume they were clogged up. And then the amounts that the contractor charged. So let's assume that's $1,000, the mode of payments. Now we've added three generic payments. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you how you can modify the values here. Let's go ahead and select cash. And then here you can just enter additional details pertaining to the payments. Now, if you indicate, for instance, check here, in this field, you can indicate the check number. If here you indicate a debit card, in this field, you can indicate details pertaining to the debit card. So this is just an optional field where you can provide additional information pertaining to the mode of payment. So once you're done supplying all the values, you click on enter, and then the template stores that expense. So you can see the dates that we performed the transaction, the property we spent it on, the type this was a repair activity, details of the maintenance, the amount that was charged by the vendor, the vendor name, mode of payment, and then optional notes that we left blank. So in future, you can always double click and type in values. So the fields are not locked. You can always double click and change values in the event you make a mistake. So now we've successfully added our first maintenance activity. To add another, we repeat the process. You click on new expense, you indicate the date, the contractor's name, the property, so it's gonna be property two, the expense type, this can be maintenance, and this can just be, I just assume that's something you do on a quarterly basis, the amounts, so that's $400, the mode of payments, and then details pertaining to the payments, then you click on enter. So now we've successfully added two maintenance activities, the first, property one, the second property two, and details of the expense. So that covers the second section. So we've covered adding new properties and then added maintenance for each of the properties. The third section we're going to cover is the income section where you enter your rental income as a when you receive it from the respective tenants. And before we cover that, first of all, we're going to store our tenants information. So you notice we have a tenant section. Once you click, this is just a database where you can be able to log your tenant at any point in time. Now to add a new tenant, you simply double click on the first field. So this can be the first day you met the tenants or the start of their first lease. Choice is yours. I'm going to back this 2019. Next, you indicate the tenant's name, the phone number if you have it, and then you indicate the address. Now the current property field is formally generated. This is because the property can change over time. So later on when you're adding lease information, you notice there's a button here for you to add your lease. Whenever you indicate that Rose Random has a lease in a particular property, the template will automatically list the property information here. So the current property field is dynamic. It's going to be determined by the template because the lease changes, it's not fixed like the phone number. Next, you indicate the email address if you have it. And then the contact address in the event of emergency, you can add an additional contact detail. So this is just the tenant's database where you log in your tenant's information. You double click, you enter in the dates, the tenant's name, the phone number, if you have it, the current property is automatically generated by the template. I'm going to demonstrate that shortly when I add a lease. The email address, if you have it, and the contact address, if they have an emergency contact. So that's a summary of the tenant information. Now that we've added tenants, we can be able to add income. But before we add income, the next thing you need to do is to document all of your active lease agreements. Now to do that from the tenant's information, so first you add the tenant, next you indicate the active lease you have. So you simply go to the lease section, and then here you enter the lease information. So once you click on the new rental button, it pops up a form. And here you enter details pertaining to the lease. So the start date, I'm going to change this to the first. The property in question, these are your three properties. I'm going to select the first. The tenant that's renting this property, Rose Random, the rental amount, and template will automatically return the rental amount using the information you entered in the property section. So notice if I change this to the second, for all the properties, I entered the same rental amount. But if I cancel those form, 
I go back to my property because it's possible that the three flats might actually have a different rate. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 4,000 and 5,000. So that means that the three flats in the same address that I have in the triplex are all, they all have a different rental amount. So three, five, four thousand, five thousand. So if I go back to my tenant's information and then I add a lease, new rental, you notice I want to select the property, returns the rental amount, three, five, four thousand. And the last is 5,000. Okay, so this will automatically return based on information in the property section. And this is not fixed. So if for any reason you're offering a discount or you're inflating the amount for any particular reason, you can always erase it and type another amount. So it's not fixed based on the information you supply. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to the first. So on the 17th of January 2020, was random rented this property. And here I can add additional notes. So any notes, excuse me, pertaining to this lease that I'm giving out. So once I'm done entering the values, I click on enter and it's going to store that information. You notice the first row has a start date, the tenant in question, the property, and then the amount. Now all sections are interconnected. Recall in the property section, I mentioned earlier on that there are some columns that will tell you at any point in time the current occupants of each property. So now we've told the template that effective from the 17th of January this year, Rose Random started renting this property, which is the third flat in the triplex. So if I go back to my property section, the third flat, if I scroll to the right, I should see Rose Random information automatically updated. So you notice the template automatically recognized the lease that I just added, and it's an active lease. So at any point in time from the property section, you can be able to know the tenants as the most recent occupants and the most recent lease date. And this is dynamic. So what do I mean by being dynamic? I'm going to add another one for this property too. So I'm going to go back to my tenant's information, add lease, new rental. And I'm going to backdate this to 9th, 2018. I can make the 1st of February. So let's assume that on the 1st of February 2018, the second property was rented by John Random, a 4,000 monthly rent. And I'm just going to leave the notes field blank. So this started on the 1st of February 2018. Once I click enter. So now you notice we've added it here. The template automatically sorted chronologically. So the oldest at the top, the most recent at the bottom. So this is the transaction I just entered here, 4,000 flat 2. So if I go back to my property information and I scroll to the right, we should see the information I just added. So the 1st of February, John Random, this is an active lease. Now, whenever this lease ends, all I need to do is to go back to the lease information. So I simply click on tenant, add lease, and then I change this from active to inactive. So what that means is that if I go back to my property section, it's going to tell me that this lease is now inactive. And since it's inactive, if we scroll to the top, you notice that it tells me right now that I have three properties, but only one is occupied because the second one has been set to inactive. So that's how dynamic this is. So notice at the top here where we have our summary information, it tells me I have three properties, but only one is occupied. If I go back to my tenants, lease, and I change this back to active, it should tell me my property section that two properties are occupied. So that's how all the sections are interconnected. So from the property section, at a glance, you can know all the properties you have, the number that are occupied, and if you scroll to the right, you can see the current occupants, and the date in which the lease started. So this is dynamic. Also, you notice right now, it tells us the 1st of February, 2018, John Random for flat number two. So if we go back to the tenant information, add lease, and we add another lease. So let's assume that this person's lease becomes inactive, and then we get another tenant for that property. So I just simply click on new rental. This is 2019 in the month of March 17, 2019. Second property, and I'm just going to use the only other tenant we have, which is Rose Random. And I'm going to leave the notes field blank and then click on enter. So now we've told the template that for this particular property, flat two, there have been two tenants. The first tenant was in 2018. The second tenant was in 2019. Now the template is dynamic because it will return only the most recent tenants. So if we go to the property information, we're, not lo we're no longer, excuse me, going to see this information. We're going to see the March information because March comes after February. So that's how dynamic the template is. So going back to my properties, scrolling to the right, you'll notice that we now have the most recent lease date. So it's now the 2019 information of Rose Random. So that's how dynamic the template is. It's always going to show you the most recent occupants and the most recent lease start date. So that covers how you add lease information. So first of all, you add the tenant information in the tenant section. You double click, supply all the values. Next, you indicate the lease information by clicking on add lease at the top. Once you do, you click on new rental, the start date, you select the property, the tenant's name, 
the amount that they have to pay on a monthly basis and any optional notes. Once you do it, you automatically store the information here. To delete is the same process. You simply click on the property name, click on delete. You get a confirmation message and then you click on yes. So that's how you add and you delete. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the December, the March transaction. Click on yes. You notice you automatically delete that lease information. So that's a summary of how you add tenants and how you document lease information pertaining to the tenants. And you notice that in the tenant information section now, the current property field is now automatically updated. So recall I mentioned earlier on that when you're adding tenants, you do not indicate their current property. The template is going to go through the lease section and then pull the most recent lease for that particular tenant. So right now it was random, it tells us it's flat three, John Random is flat two. So the current property is automatically updated by the template. So now that we've added property information, maintenance information, tenant information, we're going to cover income information. So this is pretty much the last data entry section in the template. So once you click on income, it works exactly the same way. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the section title telling you this is where you document your payment information. To the right of this, we have two buttons to add a new payment, to delete an existing payment. Above this, we have our navigation pane. And below the two buttons, we have our data table where all your properties will be listed. To add a new payment, you simply click 